Hey everyone! So today I'm here to review the Clinique Pop Lip Color Plus Primer. They individually retail for $18 US, 21 in Canada, they contain 0.13 ounces of product, and they're available in 16 shades. They are said to be a rich, weightless formula that fuses bold, saturated color with a smoothing primer. The packaging is half reflective silver and half color coded depending on the shade, which is incredibly useful for storage. As expected with Clinique products, these lipsticks are fragrance free and they have no taste. The formula was smooth, lightly moisturizing, and had good color payoff, despite some of the lighter shades lightly falling into lip lines during wear. These lipsticks have a thin, weightless consistency that makes applying easy without having them drag or tug at your lips when you're applying. Beige Pop is a light to medium peach beige with warm undertones and a creamy glossy finish. This shade applied smoothly, mostly even, and semi-opaque. My natural lip pigmentation did show through in some areas, and I found that the color did lightly settle into the fine lines of my lips over time. But this could be easily prevented by applying the lipstick over top of a lip pencil. Beige Pop wore well for three and a half hours before fading. In comparison, Bites Retsina was similar but more brown. Kat Von D's No was less pink and matte, and the Too Faced Melted Chihuahua was darker and more brown. Berry Pop is a medium brightened berry red with warm undertones and a creamy glossy finish. This shade applied smoothly, mostly even, and semi-opaque. It had nice pigmentation, but the color did lightly grab to any imperfections or dry areas of my lips, which did cause it to appear ever so slightly darker in those areas. Pairing this lipstick over top of a lip pencil helped prevent that. Berry Pop wore well for five hours and left behind a faint stain. In comparison, Max D for Danger was lighter, cooler, and more muted. Cherry Pop is a medium brightened vivid red with cool undertones and a glossy cream finish. This shade applied smoothly, evenly, and mostly opaque. This was honestly the best performing shade of the bunch, and the smooth, creamy consistency made it very comfortable to wear. Cherry Pop wore well for six hours and left behind a stain. In comparison, the Too Faced Melted Velvet was lighter and warmer, and the Too Too Faced Melted Strawberry was lighter and more pink. Fab Pop is a light baby pink with warm undertones and a glossy cream finish. This shade applied smoothly, mostly even, and semi-opaque. Due to the thinner consistency, this particular shade had a bit more slip to it than the rest, which caused the color to lightly settle into fine lines almost immediately after applying. But once again, applying a lip pencil beforehand will help prevent this from happening. Fab Pop on its own wore well for three hours before fading. In comparison, Kat Von D's Lovesick was warmer and matte, and Kat Von D's Melancholia was lighter, more yellow toned, and matte. Great Pop is a light to medium muted lavender pink with warm undertones and a creamy glossy finish. This shade applied smoothly, mostly even, and semi-opaque. The pigmentation of this particular color was really nice, but it felt more sheer than you would expect. It's a very weird concept to try and explain. It's really pigmented, but it's a tad bit sheer if that makes sense. Great Pop wore well for five hours before fading. In comparison, the Too Faced Melted Violet was lighter, brighter, and more purple. Max Heroin was darker, cooler, and more purple. Max Men Love Mystery was cooler, muted, and more purple. And the Sephora Collection African Violet was brighter, cooler, and more matte. Plum Pop is a medium muted pink plum with neutral undertones and a glossy cream finish. This shade applied smoothly, evenly, and mostly opaque. This shade this shade had a thicker consistency than the rest of them, which I felt helped stop the product from settling into lip lines over time. But with that thicker consistency, I felt that it did accentuate any dryness or imperfections more easily. Plum Pop wore well for five hours before fading. In comparison, the Too Faced Melted Fig was cooler and more purple. Kat Von D's Mother was brighter, cooler, and more pink. The Sephora Collection Marvelous Mauve was muted, more brown, and matte. And the Sephora Collection Pink Soup was lighter and more pink. Sweet Pop is a light to medium candy pink with cool undertones and a creamy satin finish. This shade applied smoothly, mostly even, and semi-opaque. Yet again, due to the pale nature of this shade and the thinner consistency, I felt that the color did lightly settle into fine lines over time, but not nearly as bad as some of the other lighter shades. Sweet Pop wore well for four hours before fading. In comparison, Kat Von D's Lovesick was lighter, cooler, and and matte. Wow Pop is a light to medium brightened pink with cool undertones and a creamy satin finish. This shade applied smoothly, evenly, and opaque. It had great pigmentation, but this was another shade that felt more sheer than it should. And unlike some of the other shades, I experienced very little
little color falling into lip lines over time. Wow Pop wore well for five and a half hours before fading. In comparison, Max Candy Yum Yum was darker, and Kat Von D's Backstage Bambi was darker, warmer, and matte. So overall, while these lipsticks didn't perform as described, if you compare them to your average lipstick, they are a good formula. And if you happen to pair them over top of a lip liner, they perform much better. Which kind of defeats the purpose, I know, since they're supposed to have a primer built in, but they do perform and wear a lot better paired over top of a lip pencil. The Clinique Pop Lip Color Plus Primers really do provide a nice, creamy pop of color. They're incredibly comfortable to wear and they are lightly moisturizing. I will definitely be reaching for these lipsticks on days where I want a hydrating, low maintenance color to my lips. And if that sounds like something that you're also interested in, or if that sounds like you on a daily basis, then these are definitely worth checking out. So be sure to let me know in the comments below if you've actually tried these before, what your thoughts are on them, or if you've actually tried the Clinique Cheek Pops. Because there are coordinating names and colors with the blushes and the lipsticks. And matching your blush and your lipstick, that's a pretty fun idea. As always, don't forget to check out my blog for more details, photos, and swatches, as well as like, comment, and subscribe to show your support. If you'd like to give me a follow, I will have all of my social media listed here, as well as down in the description. As I always say, I hope you found this review helpful, and I hope that you're having a fantastic day, and thank you so much for watching.